When you think about three-dimensional shapes, rectangular boxes might be the first thing you picture, but there are all kinds of three-dimensional shapes. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find the volume and surface area of three-dimensional shapes with congruent bases. And later, we'll go over how to calculate the volume of a right circular cylinder. Let's start with the basics. For any three-dimensional shape with congruent bases and a uniform height that's perpendicular to both of the bases, regardless of the shape of the base, the volume is the area of the base times the height. Let's apply this to solve an ACT problem that asks for the volume of a block of wood. What is the volume, in cubic inches, of a solid block of wood with equilateral triangles as bases that have an area of the square root of 3 and dimension shown below? The answer choices are the volume of the block. As always, let's underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. We know that the square root of 3 is the area of the bases, so let's mark that. In this case, the height is horizontal and the distance between the bases is 4. We're used to thinking of height as a vertical distance, but it's always the distance between the bases. Now let's write out our formula. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. We know the area of the base is the square root of 3, and the height is 4. So putting these into the equation for the volume of the block, we find that the volume is 4 times the square root of 3, which is choice G. Now that we've reviewed finding volumes of three-dimensional shapes, we're ready to find the surface area of these shapes. Let's look at the shape from the last question and find the surface area. The surface area of a solid is the area of each face added together. This shape has five faces. Two are triangular bases and three are rectangular faces. The question tells us that the area of each triangular base is the square root of 3. To find the area of each rectangle, we multiply base times height, which is 2 times 4, or 8. The total surface area is the area of the bases plus 3 times the area of the sides. So 2 times the square root of 3 plus 3 times 8. This equals 2 times the square root of 3 plus 24. What other three-dimensional shapes can you think of? How about cylinders? You see them every day in the form of soda cans and rolls of toilet paper. Let's review how to find the volume and surface area of a right circular cylinder. A right circular cylinder is just a cylinder whose bases are congruent circles, with an axis passing through the center of the circular bases that is perpendicular to the circles. The formula for the volume of the cylinder is also the area of the base times the height. But since we're working with circles, this ends up being pi r squared times height. Let's look at an ACT question that asks us to calculate the volume of a right circular cylinder. To the nearest cubic inch, what is the volume of water that will be in the container when it is filled with water to a depth of 10 inches? Note, the volume of a cylinder is given by pi r squared h, where r is the radius and h is the height. As usual, underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices volume. The answer choices represent the volume of water. Normally, it would be tempting to skim over a note, but on the ACT math section, any notes given at the bottom of a question are really important to read. In this note, we're given the formula for the volume of a right circular cylinder, pi r squared h. So let's write that down. To find the volume of water in the container, we need to use the height of the water, which is 10. Plugging 4 in for the radius and 10 in for the height of the water, we get pi times 4 squared times 10 which using our calculator we find is 502.654. We need to round this number off to the nearest cubic inch. Since the tenths digit is 6, we'll round the units digit up, giving us 503, which is our final answer, choice H. Knowing how to measure volume can be useful, since it's easy to measure how much liquid you have when you know the dimensions of its container. But learning is only half the battle. Now try practicing some problems to truly master 3D shapes.